Welcome back to the channel and happy new years to every single one of y'all. I appreciate y'all support and I cannot wait to see what 2024 has in store for us. Thanks to all my new people. Thanks to all my old people. I appreciate y'all more than y'all would ever know. So today we got the first new blades for 2024 that will get started with an X took knife. This right here is the SX602. I reviewed and tested this one a while back on the channel and I it was a favorable review because I like the knife. 14Z 28 inch steel, texture G10, smooth button lock. The only thing I didn't like about this one are those thumb studs. They were a little uncomfortable for my hands. But other than that, I thought it was a good knife. Well, they just released a newer version. This is a smaller version of this. This one's 7.85 inches with a 3.1 inch blade. This new one has micarta scales instead of G10. Same flipper and thumb studs. They also put us some way more comfortable thumb studs. See how these just have this generic studs with these hard tops. This one has a normal stepped thumb stud and it's wider. These are way, way more comfortable for my hands at least. And this was a smaller version. This one's coming in at 7.44 inches long with a 3.15 inch blade. So it's around, what is that, uh, 0.41 inches smaller than the original. In my medium sized hands, I get a nice comfortable four finger grip. You still get the same 14C 28 inch steel. From my testing with this one, it has a nice thin edge, so it sliced very well. This one feels just the same. Beautiful action on this. This has got a very, very smooth, silky action. Those thumb studs are way more comfortable. I, I didn't even want to use these studs because they hurt my thumbs. So yeah, what do y'all think about this smaller version of the SX602? I will link everything that is available down in the description. They are affiliate links, so if you want to help support what I do here on the channel, it helps pay for my testing materials, but no harm. If not, it's no big deal. Next up, hopefully you've seen the review of this TACCOM Vigor V2 on the channel. We, we tested and reviewed this one last year now. And I, I liked it a lot, especially, I think these go for 160 or something like that. Very, very competitive out the front. And uh, it was a, it's a very good out the front. I mean, the action, outstanding. It's not hard to overcome the, the spring and it's still nice and snappy. This is an excellent side right here. Not that long ago, they sent the TACCOM Chimera and got some nice milling on the aluminum deep carry pocket clip that's reversible, glass breaker, which I'm not a big fan of, but I think you could probably take that off. And then this one has a Warncliffe blade and these two are both in 154CM. This one, I mean, rockets out. They don't have that much play compared to some of the out the fronts I have. They just sent a brand new model. This is the new TACCOM Grunt. Love that blade. This one is obviously geared toward first responders, tactical operators, paramedics, anybody who would need a seatbelt cutter because that's what that is on the end. You got a nice drop point on this one. Beautiful stone wash. This one has dual fullers on both sides and this one's a Bowler M390. The aluminum has nice texture to it, so it gives you some good grip. And if you look at these three, the grunt is a, it has much wider scales are a lot bigger than these two. And they did that for comfort in a high stress situation. You, you want as much comfort as you can because you're going to be fumbling around with stuff, I'm sure. It's got a nice sharpening choil. We'll see. I might try to sharpen that up to see how that is. Your, your tip's not too dainty. Very good action. You got step milling on the slide button it's got a reversible deep carry pocket clip for me personally you know being that i'm not a first responder or i'm not somebody who needs a seatbelt cutter i would I, <laughs> I would just chop that off because for my hands where this choil is if i sit right there in that choil and i'm bearing down as you can see that little hook right there is burying into my hand now, I don't know if it's going to be a problem until I start doing the testing on this. And y'all let me know. I might treat it like a high stress situation and see what this thing can handle. That's something y'all would like to see from and out the front. We can definitely try it. I mean, I've done stabbing testing with this one, impact stabbing, to see if it would hold up. It did great. 
If you'd like to see me do some hard use testing with this, we could see what it can handle. Now, M390 is not a hard use steel. It's made for edge retention. So I'll kind of have to gear it a little bit toward that, but I'm still not scared to do you know, just about whatever with this. It's a little bit longer, even with the glass breaker than the Microtech Ultratech. I picked up this Flissa fixed blade hunting knife a while back and this comes in at 8.5 inches long and it costs 24 bucks so i picked it up because I'm, I'm trying to put together a amazon fixed blade video on you know cheaper fixed blades and see which ones can perform and which ones to stay away from so this was one of those and i mean i don't know if you'll better see the scarring on it but I tested this thing like I do all my other ones plus more. This is in D2 steel, G10 scales. It's fairly comfortable in hand. Like I said, eight and a half inches long for 24 bucks. You can even see where I batoned it up here. It, it actually blew me away with how well this thing performed. Now the sheath is just kind of eh. It, it holds it, but I don't know for how long. I mean, because this is like a plasticky sheath. And then this is not the best, this little belt clip thing. But for 24 bucks, I'm not complaining. I picked up a second Felissa. Actually, this is actually like my fourth Felissa that I picked up. That's how impressed I've been. So this one's a bigger knife. We'll keep this one out. They say that this one's 10 inches, maybe with the sheath it is, but I think it's like 9.8 inches with just a fixed blade. So it's got, I think that's a pleather sheath. Let's see. It looks like a pleather sheath. Uh, but you know, it, I think I'd rather this right here than this because this one's once it goes to crap It's gonna be hard to fix it this one uh, as long as I keep this little button thing Okay, uh, you can also turn this so you can try to keep it out of the way or hold it And I just like the way this one looked looks pretty wicked almost in the pictures I didn't notice it, but it almost looks like a tanto up here in the front this is coated just like that one, except that one's like a black wash. This one's just a black finish. It also in D2 steel, got dual fullers on both sides. This one's very comfortable in hand. Uh, they, they list this as micarta, and I'm guessing it is. I'm guessing it's paper micarta. It's got some grip to it, and they got some milling on it. Full tank instruction. Now this one is a good bit bigger. This is more like EDC fixed blade size. This I would consider like a hunting knife a belt knife you know or a camp knife tell me what y'all think about that type of video is that something y'all are interested in seeing like i said i have over 10 fixed blades from like flissa and other companies that i've been testing over the last month or two and i was going to put together a video and tell you you know show you the, some of the the testing footage and talk about the the pros and cons and if if i think it's a good buy or not would y'all be interested in seeing that video or are y'all not interested in somewhat bigger fixed blades? You know, they're not huge fixed blades. You got this size, this size, and, and a little bit big. You got a, one or two that are a little bit bigger, but not by a whole bunch. And then some that are in between these two. So y'all just tell me if y'all want to see that type of video. I, I don't want to put forth all this effort and nobody wants to watch it. So just let me know down in the description. I'm sure most of y'all probably seen the Monocala Knives Assault Team Knife. I reviewed and tested this one right here on the channel and I was absolutely blown away. This was an Amazon knife of the month pick and it's been in several videos now. It's got actual titanium scales. I've anodized them as you can see blue just to see. Uh, compound ground 14C 28 blade slicey and the 14C held up outstanding on this thing and it's like 36 bucks I think whenever I bought this and then you can get get it with uh, actual carbon fiber not a laminate scales same blade and everything they also have it in G10 well I found this one so this right here is the new grenade how original huh it's got uh, frag grenade texture on this tan G10 and I don't know if it's going to come across in the video but it ha it has like texture on top like milling on top so this is very grippy you got a reversible tip up deep carry pocket clip the price was good on this flipper and thumb studs they both work great very snappy and look at that blade the blade is what got me interested coated blade i don't know if there was nine coated or not we got black hardware tan g10 unfortunately though on this one they went with d2 steel i wish they would have stayed with the 14c especially being that i've already tested it but here's a shot if you happen to have bought the monocala assault team knife this is the size comparison with the new Monocala gr Grenade. And I'll also, let's see, I'll throw the Ontario Rat Model 1 at the bottom. 
So it's a little bit bigger than the assault team knife if you go pivot to pivot. But if you go butt to butt, you can see it's a little bit longer than the assault team knife. And it's you go pivot to pivot with the rat one, it's a little bit smaller in all dimensions. So butt to butt with the rat one, as you can see, it's about a half inch smaller than the rat one. And there it is with the rat one on top, rat two on bottom. So it's in between the rat one and rat two. I have to say the action, stellar. Flipping action, great. Look at that. Can I reverse flick? Oop. It's hard to reverse flick unless I'm putting my finger like that. Yeah, I gotta push it like that because I can't get my fingernail underneath it. The detent's dialed to where it, it's got good flipping action. That flipper tab is a little below the center line of that pivot. So, you know, you got that much of the blade coming out until it has to take over. It is riding on bearings, but they have the detent dialed pretty darn good. And there's texture on that flipper to grab the finger and it still comes out really nice. The ergos initially feel great. We'll see. Now the, the finishing on the black finish is kind of wonk. But like I said, this is a budget knife. And it's got one of the worst uh, sharpening areas I've seen. That's what I'm talking about. If you don't have, if you've ever wondered why I, I like a sharpening notch. Because if not, when you sharpen it, it's going to go into that plunge grind, which is a thicker portion. You know, This is where the full thickness tapers down into this portion. So the more I sharpen it, the thicker that portion is going to get and it's going to get wider and wider and wider. And once you get down to that area, it's going to be a really big problem. So I would cut in front of it probably about that much so I can, you know, have a sharpening choil. God, I love that blade. Very, very bulky, bulky blade. Had to give you all a good pokey pokey for the new year. Access to the lock bar, it's pretty good. This comes in a little bit lower, it does have texture. It's not terrible or anything. I can slow roll it. Yeah, the action is really good so far. We got a new light that came in from a company I've never tried out before. I've seen them online a lot. Is it Sofern? This is the SC29. It's an excellent size. I love this size light. It's a little bit bigger than I EDC, but this is what I this is the size I usually carry when I'm walking my dog at night. They're usually a little bit brighter than my smaller ADC lights. This one has some nice texture on the aluminum. It's got some nice venting for heat dissipation. You got a nice rubber cover for your charging port. We got USB-C charging port there. Side click button here. Pocket clip. Magnetic tail end. This one has the XHP50B emitter. That looks pretty crazy. I don't have any looking like that. Pretty darn bright. Turbo of 3,000 lumens for four hours. High at 1,000 lumens for five hours. A mid with 350 lumens for six hours. A low at 30 lumens for 50 hours. And a eco, basically moonlight, one lumen for 500 hours. It has a 21700 battery. It's IP68 water resistant and one meter drop. It can handle one, one meter a uh, one meter drop. So I'll do some beam shots with this in our nature trail behind the house and I uh, will get a good feel for the light and then I'll do a short little review on it. Uh, I know that's not something y'all love seeing on the channel because usually when I post flashlight videos, not many people watch. I know I'm not, I'm not a flashlight reviewer, so I don't go into depth as they do, but uh, I can tell you what I think about it at least. So that's that one. I definitely want to check out some more brands because Olight seems to be flooding the market. So I want to see what else is out there. You know, I've had Through Night and I've had Nightcore, which I love. And I've had uh, some other ones. So we'll see. Uh, we'll check this one out. Tell me what y'all think about it. Well, that does it for today's video. Let me know if you have any questions about anything in particular. Uh, let me know you, what you would like to see a review on first. Like I said, everything will be linked down in the description. And I hope everybody has an absolute wonderful New Year's Day and an even better 2024. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.